Hello, my name is Bob Phillips. I'm one of the paediatric oncology doctors at the Leeds Children's Hospital, a member of CCLG and a researcher at the Centre for Reviews and Dissemination at the University of York. This little video is to try to explain the three different categories that the government has placed people in and how things vary between them in terms of trying to reduce the transmission of the new coronavirus. Now at the minute we're all in lockdown where we're really trying to minimise interaction between people. So I'm sort of going to assume that that isn't the case for these three different groups but it will apply to everybody. Now the highest group are the extremely vulnerable group. This is the group that's been decided by the government that it is at the greatest risk of catching the new coronavirus. For our patients, this means people who are on active treatment, on chemotherapy, radiotherapy, fancy stuff as well. Those patients should be kept at home and have the minimum contact with the outside world, trying to mean that they don't even interact as much as possible with other members of their house. Now we know that that's almost impossible for children and young people and we think that that's unreasonable and it has been explained that people do, don't mean that children shouldn't mix with members of their household. But what you could do is stuff that you might be doing already, that the child who is undergoing treatment might have separate towels and face cloths, might make sure that their toothbrush is nowhere near anybody else's so that they can't be touching, might make sure that they have plates, cups, knives and forks that are different than other people's. The advice is to make sure that you wipe all surfaces thoroughly and make sure everything is clean. And we at the CCLG are pretty sure that you do a lot of that already. The group that is less at risk is called the vulnerable group. Now for our patients, that is those patients who have completed treatment, but they're just off treatment and their immune system hasn't fully recovered yet. So for most standard chemotherapies, that'll be around about six months to the point where your clinician will be saying to you, it's time for you to go and get your booster vaccinations. It's not that you've got to have your vaccinations. The normal vaccination boosters won't do anything about this new coronavirus. But what that means is that sort of length of time is how long it takes for the immune system to get back up and perky. That vulnerable group, when lockdown isn't in place, are suggested that they have good social distancing and that's basically the same as lockdown. Only go on essential trips, make sure you stay away from people when you are out, try and minimise the interactions and have very few gatherings of a lot of people around minimising visitors to your home. When the lockdown is removed, the patients who are beyond that point where their immune system has fully come back to normal, assuming that they don't have another chronic health condition that would put them in one of the other groups, those patients are just the same as the rest of us and don't need to go anything more than the, the same precautions that the rest of us will be taking to get on and get, uh, get on in the world. Now, there have been many concerns raised about the practicalities of doing this and all of this advice is intended to be for all ages of patient. We know that the new coronavirus seems to affect children less than it does older adults. The disease is less severe. We also know that when we try to drag together all the cases in paediatric hematology oncology, we're seeing very few severe cases and very few cases at all actually and that might be because you're already quite brilliant at infection prevention making sure that everybody washes their hands wiping down surfaces and stuff like that we don't know everything and new things are coming out all the time there is lots and lots and lots of active research and that's research about the virus about its transmission about preventing it about how people are coping with this and how we can support people and these are global, national and international collaborations to try to get this information together. This is all being coordinated across the country with loads of effort from loads of people. The CCLG has been very, very effective at networking us together. And the local children's cancer charities, I'm sure in your area as well as mine, are doing their best to support people through this. When you're out on the far side, or if anybody in the area asks, please get them to support. Thank you.